Hey everyone, and welcome to Life Fellowship. We're so glad that you're joining us today. If this is your first time ever visiting our church, we wanna welcome you and answer any questions you have. If you could, take a moment to fill out the connection card. It's located in the seat back pocket of the chair in front of you. After the service, you can drop that off at our Blends Cafe, where we would love to bless you with a complimentary drink of your choice. Or you can simply drop it in the offering box as you leave today. If you're joining us online, you can fill out the digital connection card and send us your prayer request by texting the word CONNECT to 972 70 72 72 8. This gives us the opportunity to connect with you, pray over your prayer request, answer any questions you have about our church, and also say thank you for joining us today. Parents, we have specially designed services for your kids and childcare for your babies. This is a place where they can move around, make some noise, have fun, all while learning about Jesus. We invite you to check in your kids to our children's ministry so that they can experience this firsthand. If you need help getting them registered, one of our guest services team members will be happy to assist you. Growth Track happens every Sunday at noon in the hub and on demand. This is a great place for you to learn all about who we are here at Life Fellowship and what we believe. And we're gonna take the opportunity to help you discover your unique purpose. For more information on our Growth Track classes, you can visit lifefellowship.tv backslash growth track. Our annual summer outreach serve day is happening on July 31st from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is an incredible opportunity for you and your entire family to be a blessing to this community. To get registered for a project or to create your own project, you can visit our website at lifefellowship.tv backslash serve day and don't forget to download the serve day app. From August 1st through the 21st, we are having our 21 days of prayer. This is a time where we're gonna be praying for God's favor, His wisdom, His presence, and the ministry of Life Fellowship Church. Join us weekday mornings from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. and on Saturday mornings from 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. as we seek God together through a time of prayer, worship, and teaching here in the main auditorium. For more information, you can visit lifefellowship.tv backslash 21 days. Thank you once again for being such a generous church. Life Fellowship, you are making an impact all over this world and in this community. If you're planning on giving today, you can do so through one of our digital platforms listed on the screen. Or you can fill out the offering envelope that's located in the seat back pocket in front of you. Once again, it's gonna be a great day. Let's get ready to worship.
hands around the room this morning. And can you tell him, God, you deserve all the glory. God, you deserve all the honor. Can you force yourself out of your comfort zone and just open your mouth and say, God, you are worthy of it all. You are so worthy of it all, God. Come on, let's, let's create an atmosphere. Come on, open your mouth and tell him he's worthy. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You deserve all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. We join with the angels as they call worthy. <laughs> we join. Hey everybody, good to have you all in service with us today. We are in part number one of a three-part series that we've entitled, So Will I. I'm going to always, as always, tell you a lot more about that in just one second. First of all, I want to say a big hello to our Church Online family. We have so many people that are out on vacation with family and you're at the beach or you're out and about and so a big welcome to you for those that are joining us and and as well as to the many, the host of folks that are joining with us online every single week from all kinds of states here in America and literally around the world. And can we put our hands together as well and welcome 108 Department of Corrections that are joining with us today. Come on, everybody. Give them a great big God bless you. 
Glad you're with us and along for the ride. Well, we are in this series, and today's message is going to be a little bit different than the other installments, because today I'm bringing with me a burden that I feel, honestly, for our entire church as a whole. Uh, and it's, it's something that I've carried with me all week long, especially into the weekend. It got heavier and heavier. And I, I believe that what I'm going to share with you today is something that uh, really reflects the heart of God. And, and that is that I, I believe that, that we as a church, uh, God wants us, God wants us to go to another level when it comes to our worship, when it comes to how we worship and adore and, and, just, and just love him. And so today, uh, I'm going to give you a very heartfelt message. Next week is going to be uh, very teachy. For those of you that like that, you're going to be, you're going to really, really like uh, next week. But today... I'm just going to give you some verses, and I'm going to share my heart, because I believe that God wants us all to go to another level than where we've maybe particularly been. And so I want to, I want to start this off today with the words of Jesus, and he said this, yet, yet a time is coming, and now has come, when true worshipers, so notice this, if there are true worshipers, that means that there's also false worshipers. So true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of what? They're the kind of worshipers that the Father seeks. And so we find right off the bat that the Father is actually seeking worshipers. And we discover what he's not seeking. I mean, he's not seeking charismatic leaders. He's not seeking great communicators. He's not seeking uh, the richest of the rich or the best of the best. He's not seeking the person that's got the greatest Instagram amount of followers. Come on, somebody. He's after one thing. God's after worshipers. The Father's after worshipers that are worship in spirit and in truth. And I know what some that are maybe listening today are thinking. You're thinking, well, Chris, I'm a Christ follower, but... I'm really not that good at worship. You know, I'm just, I'm not necessarily into that whole worship thing. And, and I would say to you today, sir, ma'am, uh, that you actually are. You are a worshiper because we all worship. We all do. In fact, check this out. Worship is actually our response to what we value the most, hands down. So if you were to go to a sporting event, whatever your favorite sports team is, what are you going to do? You're going to celebrate. You're going to get excited. You're going to worship. You go find your favorite band that you like, you know, seeing, and you go out to the concert. And what's going to happen? There's going to be some worship, and there's going to be some celebration that's going to happen. If you happen to win the lottery, how many of you all know there's going to be some worship? There's going to be some, uh, there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm because of what took place. In fact, I, I want to show you some images today of people who are worshiping. So check this out. Adoration. Uh, how about this? How about, how about devotion? How, how, how about this? How about enthusiasm? How, how, how about this one here? Uh, just plain worship. How about this one? Love. And the thing that you, I think that you and I would all agree in every one of these pictures that is being communicated is this, that this is all good worship. I mean, let's just, come on, everyone, let's just call it what it is. Those are great pictures of good worship. Problem is, it's worshiping a bad God. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty of it. I'm not going to, you know, uh, nitpick uh, different sports teams and different, you know, bands and all that. I'm, I'm not going to call them bad. But by no means am I going to call them good gods. So we, we, we have good worship happening right now of bad gods. So, but the challenges in the church, by and large, uh, the problem is, is that we actually have bad worship of a good God. Like, we really do. Uh, so, uh, 
So let me ask you a question. When, when you came into service today, did you encounter the presence of God during that worship set we just had? Did you, did you have a moment that you were able to express the depth of your heart to the Lord? Were you able to connect with him going, man, I didn't know it, but I know it now. God is in this room, and God, I give you gratitude, and I give you thanks, and there's none like you. Or did you just kind of show up like, ah, I don't know what's going to happen today, and watch the team sing some songs? Jesus actually dealt with this problem in the New Testament. He actually quoted the prophet Isaiah out of the Old Testament. And he said, these people, they honor me with their lips. But they're what? Their hearts. They're far from me. Their worship, it's not even real. It's a farce. And here's what I know about you, Life Fellowship. Guys in the correctional facility, those of you online, that you love God. You, you want to go to a level with him. You want to experience that depth of worship. You want to give him adoration and love, and you want, to, you want to be excited about the things of God. That's why you're here today. And I believe that God is going to do something in and through this service that is going to serve as a catalyst that is going to take you, all of us, to another level. In fact, at the end of this service, we're going to go back into a time of honoring and worship and celebration of the goodness of our God. And so to kind of set the tone of the message here today, I want you to see the words of King David, which he said in Psalms 100. He said, hey, everybody, shout with, uh, with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with singing, and there's that word again, and with joy. And hey, everybody, let's acknowledge that the Lord God, he has made us, and we are his. We are his people. We ain't somebody else's. We're the king's people, the sheep of his pasture. So we're going to enter his gates with thanksgiving. We're going to step on into his courts with some praise, give thanks to him, and praise his name. David said, for the Lord is good and his unfailing, it never fails, it never runs out, it never runs short, it continues forever and ever and ever. His faithfulness continues to your generation, to your grandkids' generation, and to the generations beyond. Like that's our God. And the reason why I am so it static about this three-week series that we're in is because of two things. And here's the first thing, and that's this, that it's the lifestyle of worship that has literally had the biggest impact on my pursuit of Jesus. I mean, it's, oh, I cannot hear worship and not want to worship him. It's impacted my life. And here's the second reason. The reason you exist is to worship the living God. So the reason why your heart's still beating this morning, the reason why there's still breath in your lungs is because you and I, we exist to worship, to lift up, to magnify our great God. So what I want to do today is I want to actually bring to you uh, three different challenges that I believe are evident in the lives of every single true worshiper of God. Three things. And here's the first one. True worshipers worship with awe. I mean, they worship with A-W-E. They worship with awe. In fact, I want you to feel the power of this verse here. Just feel this. It says in Hebrews, it says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Man, I like that. Like, no, no matter what you've done in your past, no matter what's going to happen in your future, you serve a God that because he defeated death, hell, and the grave, he has established a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Mm -mm, it's just not. So, so let us then be thankful, which by the way, um, uh, gratitude is the bridge. It is the gateway to worship. So let's be thankful and, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and, come on, everyone, say this next word out loud, and with awe. awe. Well, why do we worship God with awe? Because God 
is a consuming fire. So we are to worship God with awe. The problem is, is that word has actually become diluted. We don't even know what that word means. We don't even know what the word awesome means anymore because culture has actually diluted these words. I mean, we use them so flippantly. It's like, hey, Brian, have you been down to the new, you know, Tex-Mex restaurant? And they got some tacos and they are awesome because <laughs> tacos are awesome, all right? Or, hey, hey, Eric, have, did, you, did you see the Texas Longhorn game? Man, it was awesome. Or did, did you see the new uh, Netflix series? Man, it was awesome. Or, or when, when your wife asks you, honey, how, how do these jeans make me look? <laughs> Gentlemen, that is a test that you must pass. <laughs> honey, those jeans make you look awesome. <laughs> but the truth is that we, we use this word to describe normal things that are really not awesome. I remember when I was growing up, uh, I was in the student ministry. There was one of our youth leaders. She was in her early 20s. She made a firm decision that she, will, she would not use that word awesome to describe anything other than God. I like that. You and I are to worship God with awe. So, so how do we do that? Well, that word awe in the Greek is the Greek word phobos, and it means a reverential fear. In fact, it's where we get the word phobia from. It means a reverential fear of the power and the holiness of God. Can I remind you that no one is awesome except our God, Amen. period. There is nothing in all creation that is awesome except for our God, period. Now, you may um, catch glimpses of awe if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon and you've seen the splendor of it. You might think, wow, that's incredible. Well, what are you getting? You're getting just a, a glimpse of awe. Or maybe you've been to Niagara Falls and you've gotten on the Maid of the Mist and it pulls right in there and the absolute enormity of the falls is cascading down and you're thinking, oh, this is incredible. What are you getting? You're just scratching the surface of awe. Or if you've ever been privileged to hold your brand new baby right after they were born and you look into their eyes for the very first time, you are just getting a glimpse of awe. Because, hey, everybody, those things are not awesome. The one that breathed the breath of life, the one that spoke out of nothing, and yet when he spoke, he created all those things. He and he alone is awesome. Amen, everybody? Amen. He is. Our God is awesome. Which really brings us to the question of the day, and it's this. If we're to worship God with awe, how do we do it? How does it happen? Well, I want to show you this. The Bible says in Psalms at 95, verse 6, King David said, come, let us do what? We need to bow down in worship and let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Ladies and gentlemen, as a Christ follower, there is a position that every one of us should be extremely, it should be extremely common in our lives to bow down before God. And I know that for some that are here today or those of you that are watching, that this is a little bit uncomfortable for you. But you just need to know that, that I, I will, when I bow down before God, I am, it is symbolically doing something on the inside of me that is declaring, God, um, I am elevating you in my life. I, I bow down, I get myself, I get myself low. And please hear me, God doesn't need me to elevate him for him to be elevated. I mean, he, he is the pinnacle of all creation. He is the grandiose. He is God Almighty. He is awesome. He doesn't need my worship to elevate him any other higher place, position, or what have you. No, but when I do, when I bow before him, there is something that happens on the inside of me that I take the lesser place and then he takes the place of preeminence. 
In fact, let me just say it like this, that there ought to be some time throughout your week, whether it's here in service like we just had a second ago, or in your own home. I think every single week there needs to come a time that we, if you need to close the door of some bedroom, you get down on your knees and you just acknowledge heaven reigns. God, you rule, not me. I declare that you are awesome. In fact, when the wise men came to the Lord and they found the Christ child, what did they do? They got down, they bowed. When Peter was called into the ministry and he, P- Peter looked at Jesus and he bowed before his rabbi, before his Messiah. The Bible says that there's coming a day that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, if God, if we're going to do that someday in heaven, if that's going to eventually happen, why not do it today? Why not do it right now? Like if we're going to do it in heaven, why not start getting some practice and start doing it here on earth? Like every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. In fact, it was back in May, we had our pursuit night. And a lot of you guys were here at that pursuit night. Oh, it was heaven, heaven. I mean, the place was packed. People standing all around the, uh, we, we had people parked up and down Henneman Way, uh, La Quinta, the, the little hotel that's over here. For those of you who don't know, there's a hotel across the street. We filled up their parking lot. I mean, it was incredible. We had all kinds of people being baptized here. There was a roar that was going through this place. And a lot of you guys remember that. And I was, I was seated right down in this place right here. In fact, Eric, you remember, you were, you were right down here, here with me. It was about 30 minutes into the service that night, and the presence of God was so (sighs) charged. And I remember looking over, and I saw my daughter sitting right down here in the front. Well, she was standing, and both hands lifted, just passionately in love, worshiping God with everything on the inside of her. And then I looked up on the platform, and my son was playing bass, and he was playing skillfully before the Lord, just lost in God's presence. And I just, I saw my son, and then right next to me on my right-hand side was my wife Tatum, and she had both hands lifted to the Lord, tears coming down her face. And the only reasonable response was for me to fall, for me to bow, for me to get down low before my God. And I remember I got down on my knees, and I remember saying to him, Lord, you've been better to me than I deserve. Thank you for letting me experience your presence, your power, your purity. You are an awesome God. Which brings me to a question I want you to grapple with today. And it's this, when's the last time that you were stunned and shaken by the presence of God. We serve an awesome God, and we are. your Father is looking for those that will worship him, for true worshipers that will worship in spirit and in truth. We are to worship with awe. The second thing is true worshipers worship with abandon. You say, what does that mean? It it means this, that true worshipers... uh, they have a little bit of fun. They, they get a little bit excited. In fact, King David, look what it says about him. Second Samuel, it says that David, King David, danced before the Lord with all his might. So you're thinking, well, why in the world was the dude dancing? Well, uh, David was the king of Israel, okay? And uh, he was just filled with such gratitude to the Lord. And so there was this, this ark and, and what it was was like this, uh, this holy chest. In fact, God had actually uh, called Moses and the entire Israelites to construct this holy chest, this ark. Um, it was really ornate. If any of you guys have seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones, you kind of know what it looks like, all right? Uh, in, the, in the ark, in this holy chest, there were three things. There was manna 
from the time that Israel was in the wilderness being led by God. There was also the remnants, the, the actual Ten Commandments that God had given to Moses, and then the staff of Aaron were all inside. And this was in a time in dispensation that the presence of God, the power of God, rested inside of this box. So wherever the box went, wherever this ark went, I mean, if it, it, it talks about that, it, that if it was around people, I mean, their homes would be massively blessed. The favor of God would be on them because the presence of God was there. If they took that ark into battle, they would decimate their enemies. And so David had, uh, had recaptured Jerusalem. He had taken out the Philistines. He, he was fulfilling what he believed was one of the life purposes for his existence. And that was to bring the ark back into, into the holy city of Jerusalem and to put it in the holy temple. And so just picture with me right now. Here's David, and the ark is coming into Jerusalem, the place where God's presence and his power rested. And it's coming in, and David is dancing like a madman before God. I mean, he is fired up. And while he's dancing, celebrating with such gratitude of his, of his great Lord, his wife looks at him and says, would you stop? You're embarrassing me. And not only that, you are humiliating yourself. You're a king, for heaven's sakes. And look at what David responded back to her with. David responded to his wife. He says, I was actually dancing before the Lord. And yes, I am willing to look even more foolish than this. In other words, you ain't seen nothing yet, baby. Oh, oh. <laughs> nothing. I mean, even to be humiliated in my own eyes. Worshipers, true worshipers. We're not going to be ashamed. We're not going to be embarrassed. We don't care if people misunderstand. We're going to worship our God with abandon. See, the problem is right now in churches around the world is... Uh, it's, it's the, the problem with a lot of churches is the way that churches have been built architecturally. So um, it, it communicates something that is kind of weird. So think about this. If you came in for the very first time, what's the very first thing that you see? You see the stage. And you see a bunch of people that are up on the stage and the lights are on them, so you're probably thinking, wow, they must be important people. And they're singing, and they're playing their instruments, and they're doing all their kind of things up here on the stage, and, and, and we are looking out at you. And if you've never been in church ever in your entire life and you came in, who do you think you would assume the audience is? Y'all. But I got news for you. You're not the audience. You never have been the audience, and you never will be the audience. Our audience is singular. Our audience is God. You, ladies and gentlemen, those of you online, you are a part of a holy chorus of Christians that we march underneath the unified banner of Jesus Christ and him alone. And when we worship, we worship not to, not to an audience. We worship to an audience of one, to a great and mighty, awesome God. Amen, everybody? Amen. That's who we worship to. And so I know that there are those that you're struggling just a little bit because you're thinking, man, oh, man I, I'd love to lift my hands. I'd, I'd love to sing. I'd, I'd love to clap. I'd love to you know, get a little something going on in my legs. I'd love to bow before God, but man, what do, what do people think? Like, what's my neighbor going to think about me? What's, what's my parents going to think about me? What's my spouse going to think about me? Well, I got news for you, everybody. They're not your audience. God is. Who cares? Who cares? In fact, if, if you don't have times uh, of worship that people think you're just a little bit crazy, 
that they don't understand it all the way, what you're doing, uh, I would question whether or not you're worshiping God with abandon. Like, God is looking for worshipers that will worship in spirit and in truth. And we worship God in, in awe. We worship God in abandon. Here's the third thing. We worship God with intimacy. Look what King David said. He said, man, one thing I ask from the Lord, just one thing. Listen, this is King David. He's the dude that was the man, that was the man after God's own heart. Do you not think that if King David would have asked the Lord for something that God would have not given it to him? And David said, man, there's only one thing that I want. One thing. It's the only thing I seek, and that is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. He had one desire. And my one prayer for you is that this would become your one desire. You know, it's kind of like my, my wife Tatum uh, over here. Her and I, we have been married for 22 blissful, problem-free, 20, all, 22 years. And, and I'm a liar, all right? But, <laughs> but I just, I mean, I love this girl over here. I love her with all my heart. I, I love about you, honey. I, I love when she is reading her Bible and she puts her hair kind of over her ear. And, I mean, you, you just look so cute to me with that, with that little hair over your, your ear like that. I love how you, you pray over our kids. You are always praying over our kids and their future spouses. And I love that about you. Uh, I love how many of you guys don't know this, but she prays for you like you wouldn't believe. There's, I, can, I mean, it's almost every day I come into a, where she's at. And sometimes she, I'm like, honey, what, you, you look a little emotional. Why, why are you crying or what are you doing? She was, she's praying over your needs. And I love that about you. Um, I love how she always sits in the front row and there, there's not a service that, gets, that we get going that she doesn't have both hands lifted. And sometimes you've got to give her a little bit of space because she likes to get a little white groove, you know, girl, little white girl groove going on down there. And I love about her uh, that when, when she gets really to laughing, like really, really, really laughing, she'll snort. <laughs> and, and I love the fact that I can tell you uh, about that and she never knew that I was going to say that today and so I love how she, how she honors her mom and dad I love how she always puts other people first before herself I love how if you were to ever um, walk up to her on a Sunday in the lobby or in the church here in that moment you are the most important person in the world to her at that moment you have her full, undivided attention. And a lot of you have experienced that just talking to her. And I, I, I love that about her. See, I, I know these things not because, you know, I read something about her or because she told me these things. I, I know this because I know her intimately. I know her pet peeves. I know what she likes. I know what she doesn't like. Because I know her intimately. And God wants that with you. Do you know that God already knows you intimately? But he wants you to experience him in that intimate way. And that is only born out of time in his presence. And I know that there are some people that are listening today and you're thinking, man, I would love to do this. I'd love to worship with the band. I'd love to sing and lift my hands and bow before God, but I just don't feel it. Well, listen to this. Feelings will always follow obedience. Feelings always follow obe obedience. They, they never proceed it. So you, you You'll never have a moment that you'll think, oh, I, I just feel like worshiping God, so I'm going to worship God. No, we, we, we don't let feelings lead our lives. Choices lead, feelings follow. That's how we live our lives. So I'm going to be a person 
that says, I'm going to worship God regardless of what I feel because he is worthy. Do you believe that, everybody? I mean, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the mighty God. He is the creator. He is the alpha and the the alpha and, and the omega, the beginning and the end. There is no one like our God. There's nobody like him. And so I'm going to worship him. Regardless of what I feel, I'm going to worship him. And today, if you will be somebody that will worship him in awe and in intimacy, and in an abandon, you're going to experience the touch of God upon your heart and life in a way that maybe you've never experienced before. Because He's here. He's here. If you would, all across this place, why don't you just do me a favor? Why don't you all stand to your feet? And I want to say this just for one moment. As your pastor, Life Fellowship, we will be a worshiping church. We will be. I believe the greatest, um, let me say it like this. I believe that authentically legitimate gatherings of believers that come together to worship God wholeheartedly is the greatest, the most powerful uh, tool to reach people far from God. Listen, I don't believe cool churches reach people far from God. I believe corporate bodies of authentic, legitimate uh, gatherings of people together, lifting up the name of Jesus, are what reach people far from God because they walk into an environment like this and they see people passionately with their hands lifted and, 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 and with excitement and enthusiasm and devotion to God and the only reasonable response to that is to give my heart and life to the Lord because listen, you don't even need to preach a message after something like that because the presence of God will touch somebody's life. And so I close today with this verse from King David. He said, accept my prayer as incense offered to you, O God, and my upraised hands as an evening offering. See, when you lift your hands, it symbolizes two things. It symbolizes victory and surrender. Listen, you and I, we don't serve a defeated king. We serve a God that was dead, but no longer. He has been raised from the dead. He has defeated death, hell, and the grave. And because we serve a mighty great God, we lift our hands in surrender to him. We surrender to him. And so it was this morning that I was prepared to at this point, kind of lead you guys into the presence of God because this was the burden that God has placed in my heart. And I walked into our den this morning and Tatum was in there all by herself. And I'd gotten up early and I came up to her and I'm like, honey, what, like, how early did you get up? She's like, "I, I, I got up really early. She said, I feel like the Lord woke me up this morning. And she said, when I woke up, there was a verse that I was speaking. But she said, it wasn't, I wasn't speaking it with my natural lips and it wasn't even with my mind. It was my spirit that was, that was speaking out this verse. And I told her, I said, honey, what, what is the verse? And she told me it. And I said, honey, I said, that is exactly, I said, God did that because he wants to speak something through you. And so I'm going to have my wife, Tatum, come. And many of you guys know she she don't ever do this, okay? And maybe she needs to do it more often, huh? Come on. Uh, But why don't you share this verse that God put on your heart? Yeah, I'm going to share the verse in one second. For those of you um, here today who maybe, uh, like me, you are believing God for a situation in your life, A miracle that you know in the natural you cannot do it you can't fix it because it's spiritual right 
And I know that in your own uh, humanity, it's easy to be discouraged. There are things that I've been praying for, for years, for years, like so many of you. And uh, I want to share with you what the Lord told me. This verse out of Zephaniah, and it says this. Don't be discouraged or grow weak from fear. The Lord your God wins victory after victory, and he is always with you. He celebrates and he sings because of you, and he will refresh your life with his love. And I'm here to tell you today, that's a word you can grab a hold of. The promises of God are true because he's not a man that lies. And I know that you feel like giving up. You wonder, God, when, when, when will I see the answer that I've been praying for, Lord? I wanna remind you today that God is greater than every obstacle. He is able to do more than you think, more than you ask. He hears your prayers. And today, I believe that the Lord wants to overwhelm you with his perfect love because the word says that his love casts out all fear. So every lie the enemy has been whispering to you about your situation, every fear that you're afraid is going to come true, let the love of God cast out that fear today because you serve a victorious God. The victory is His. It's His. Amen. So come on, all across this place, I want every hand uplifted. I don't care if it's your first time here at this church. Those of you guys and gals in the correctional facility, come on, every hand lifted to the Lord. If you don't even believe in God, I want to ask you, lift your hand to the Lord. And I want us to lift our voices to Him. And let's just sing it out. Come on, sing it, sing it, sing it. it Let's sing it out. He's worthy. You're worthy of it all.
Danny, come on, just lift up your voice. Today we commit our lives afresh and anew to you and we declare that we will worship you with our lips and with our lives and with our, with our hands, with our bowing, with our generosity, with our time. We will worship you and we declare that heaven reigns, heaven reigns. I really felt walking into today that somebody, somebody, God is setting you free from depression. There's somebody that you're listening right now and while we were singing that, you felt that heaviness just lift right off of you. And then there's, there's, there's others here that you've been praying for your children. They, they are not where they need to be with the Lord. And the enemy has lied to you and said that you are a horrible parent, that you have missed it, but those are lies from the father of lies himself, Satan. And your children are not too far gone, but God's got a plan and a perfect will for their life. And that your prayers are heard by the Lord and he is responding in ways that you never even dreamed possible. And the Lord would tell you today that they are not too far gone. They are not out of his eyes and his attention, but he has sent his angels to protect them, to walk with them. And he is working his perfect will and plan for their life and that they will live to declare the glory of God in their, in, in, in their lifetime and you will see it. And so God, we just commit these things into your hands and we thank you that you are a faithful God. Those of you that are watching in the correctional facilities, let me tell you something. You have not gone too far from God. You have not strayed too far from the Lord. God loves you. You are not what you have done. You are who God says that you are. And you are a son and a daughter of God. If you will just call upon his name here today, he will change you from the inside out. 
and that's available for you. And so those of you that are listening today, if you are away from God and you need to be close to Him, come on, call upon the name of the Lord right now. Just declare it with your mouth. Lift up. The devil can't stop you. Your friends cannot hinder you. You lift up your voice and you declare it to the Lord. Say, God, I give you my life. I fall at your feet in asking for your grace. I receive your mercy. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I declare with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And I declare that in Jesus' strong name I pray and all God's people, come on, say amen and amen, amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I promise you that the Lord heard you. And there's a life change that has happened on the inside. And you just need to know that we, we are all about seeing people's lives changed. We're addicted to change lives around here. And so we're just so thankful for what God has, has done in your heart and life. And here's what I want to do to close this service out. There's an incredible sense of God's presence here. And I'm gonna ask our prayer teams right now, would you please come on out, those of you that are here to pray. You know, it's when the presence of God shows up, that's when miracles start happening. And if, I'm telling you that if you need a miracle today, I don't care how big or small, please respond. Don't just run off, you know. Uh, stick around the altar here. Let's have a moment to bring these needs before God and let's see a miracle happen in your life. And so the ways to give are on the screen. And I just want to thank you for your generosity to the Lord today. Lord bless you. Lord keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. I love you everybody. God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>